Okay, first and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises and glory belongs to my Lord and Savior. His name is Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Bahavakakwadash. The name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, in who I reverence and honors to the elder apostles of great Norse that taught me this truth and to the hopeful elect across the globe and to the few, the very few brothers and sisters listening and also learning in the hopes of being saved within these last days. I'm going to balance it out now. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to balance it out. The most important matters that are neglected. What did Yahweh Shai say? Matthew 23. Okay. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithe of mint and anise of coming and have omitted the way to your matters of the law. You've pushed it aside. The way to your matters of the law. But they were practiced within the law. Judgment. Okay. Mercy and faith. Okay. And the scriptures tell you in 1 Corinthians 6 and 4. Okay. Examine, Paul said, what? Examining ourselves first. So it starts with ourselves first. So judgment, mercy, and faith. These men, they were not examining themselves. They were examining everybody else, but they were not examining themselves. And if you don't have judgment, if, if you're a reprobate, and that's why the scripture says, examine thyself, lest you be reprobate. Reprobate is someone that is void of judgment. So a reprobate doesn't have true judgment. He doesn't have true discernment. And if you don't have mercy, if you're a man, everything and anything that happens to you, put up curses. Up, that's immature because you could be putting a curse on the hopeful elect just so you can be condemned so someone that does that that's a sign that a man doesn't really have mercy right and yeah nothing's wrong with putting up curses because Paul put curses on men that left him and went back into the world Elijah put curses on what them children that were um, calling them bald head bald head but you have to be spiritual right and faith, and you also need to have faith. So these were the three most important things: judgment, mercy, and faith. These you have to all done. These ought you have to have done, and not to leave the other undone. Now we're gonna go into it, and Lord willing, this ed this lesson will be edifying. Right? Because right now, I don't have a whole group of brothers around me, so I need to be extra. Extra circumspect, extra, what's it, critiqued, I need to critique myself even more to now critique anybody else, because it always starts with ourselves, right? Go to Matthew 7 and 3, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking again, okay, I have, so, I've, I've had people that have brought this truth, who are you to judge, you can't judge me, yes, the prophets can judge you. Because they're not judging you by their own accord, they're judging you by the scriptures. So the scripture says, judge not, that ye not, be not judged. So a man, a Christian, would read the scriptures and put down the book, put down the scriptures. Now you can judge. The scriptures judge not, lest you be judged. So it was warning of how you're judging, how you're dealing with matters. For with what, what judgment you judge, whatever judgment, but it's according to what judgment you judge, ye shall be judged. And that's what our people don't understand. And that's why, you know when I do vi particular videos upon brothers not being lukewarm like a year ago, two years ago? Because I wasn't being lukewarm. So you can do that. You judge people on things that you see, but you make sure you're not doing it. Okay? And with what measure you meet, okay, meet from metrio, measure out, it shall be measured to you again. So always keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. And there's a, there's a saying, you reap what you sow. So whatever you're sowing, that's what you're going to reap. If you've been, if you've been on um, a whole, a, that tyrannical spirit all these years, what do you think is going to happen eventually? You're going to get a taste of your own medicine. <laughs> okay? So that's why there's balance within the truth. It shall be measured to you again. Okay. To whatever you're going off on. And why beholdest thou that mote? That is in thy brother's eye. Let's look up this word mote. 
and see what pops up. Going to this word malt, excuse me, malt, small dust, known as a small dust particle, right? A malt, okay, a dust particle, okay. So a little problem, a little issue. And that's what is spiritual because in Matthew 23 it says that they strain at a gnat. So you have men that will strain at a smallest matter. You may see a brother that's, um, he may have got a particular word wrong. And you're saying, see, see, he got that word wrong. He's going off. Bro, he got a word wrong. Okay. Well, why is it? Why is he eating? Um, why is he eating a cheeseburger? That's bad for your health. Brothers need to grow up in this truth. And why behold is the malt that is in thy brother's eye? A, li a little, a little. I've experienced a little issue, a little little thing. And yeah, we know little things can turn into big things. But a malt is something that's being blown out of proportion. But consider it's not the beam that is in their own eye. And what's a beam? A beam a beam is a large, a large wood, wooden plank. So you got a plank in your eye. You got major issues. Major issues. You got insecurity issues. Okay. You you may be an individual that you don't know how to react if you're not if you're not in control. You may be that particular individual. You don't know how to react if you're not in control if you feel like you're not in control but guess what you are not in control right it's your that's in control <laughs> okay that's what you got to realize it's your that's in control and certainly a narcissist hates when he's not in control when things ain't going his way okay so there's different beams and the beam is an issue right that one has so the scripture was saying, why are you why are you consider with the malt, the little malt that's in that brother's eye, the little issue that he has, but consider with not the beam that you got big ass problems yourself. You can't even take correction. You can't even be honest with yourself. So that's a big beam. Why? Because you never dealt with the issue. Which was yourself. Okay? It's like an example. Babies, let's go to verse 4. Well, how would I say to thy brother? Let me put out the beam, the moat, out of thy eye. Okay? That, that, little, that little thing that the brother may have been struggling with. And behold, the beam is in thy own eye. Right? I want to use an example. Smoking. Because I think it's the right example. You know why? Because, again, a lot of brothers may have had a problem with it. Right? They may be smoking some ganja. Right? Which that goes back, that culture goes back to um, the Indians. And it's all, yes, it's witchcraft. Smoking is witchcraft. Cannabis is used for medic medicinal reasons. You can eat it. You can have um, cannabis tea. But it's not for smoking. Because then it becomes what? A toxic. Right? So I want to use this as an example. How would I say to that brother, let me put out the motor of that eye? So there may have been a brother that was struggling with that at one point. He may have fell here and there. Okay. And behold, a beam is in that own eye. But guess what? You're in the truth. You're a liar. You're deceitful. You may not even believe in the scriptures. You may scoff against the chariots. Right? You may be doing all types of wickedness. But you're going to get on your brother. You know? And how would they say to that brother, let me put out the motor that is in the eye. Behold a, behold a beam is it. you got bigger issues of yourself. And this individual that's got that malt, he's dealing with that malt. That's why it's a malt, because it's smaller than the beam. The beam's bigger than the malt. The beam represents severe issues. Though hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of their own eye. Make sure you're right. Make sure your spirit's right, because you ain't right. And then should I clearly cast out the mark out of their brother's eye? Once you're right. And you know the, the thing is, even when I was smoking, okay, which I'm not doing anymore, I cut that habit out long time ago. 
even when I was doing that, within the truth, first thing, my eyes were still on the prize. I still had faith and I actually did believe. But it was something that's habitational. It may be hard to kick. But guess what? I kicked that bad habit. Right? And I wasn't doing videos on telling other brothers, oh, you shouldn't smoke. Because then I'd be a hypocrite. But once you got yourself right, but guess what? I was still teaching. Because the scriptures don't say you can't teach. It says take the mark out of their own eye. So when I was doing that, I wasn't getting on other brothers saying, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. That's what makes one a hypocrite. So you see, there's a difference. I always kept it real. Always, 100%. And the brothers that know, no. Don't hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of their own eye. You get the issue out of your... Make sure you, you dealt with your issue first. Then should I see clearly cast out of the mouth out of their brother's eye. That's when you can deal with that issue. Alright? In verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. That's why, again, this is one thing I've learned. Yeah, you have an audience. But you've got to know your audience. And over time, I've had the experience of individuals maybe standing out the other side. And just by you examining, you can see what spirit they're in. The script says, give not which is holy unto the dogs. Because they're going to look at this word in a particular light. The man may not believe, he may scoff. And may not want to stop scoffing. So you don't give that which is holy, this word, unto dogs. Okay. Neither cast your pearls, something that's precious, before swine, pig. Right? And you know that's a man that's a reprobate. If a man says, yeah, pig, that's the cleanest, that's one of the cleanest somewhat animals. You know that man's a reprobate. If anybody tells you that. I just got to throw that out there. Swine is unclean. Pigs, they eat anything. So the scriptures, Yahweh is also referring our people to swine and dogs. Don't give them this word because they're not going to appreciate it. Some of that don't appreciate this word. They're just going to tread it, tread it down, unless they trample it under their feet. They think nothing of it and turn again and rend you. They try, they're going to try and rend you. With the same man you're teaching, he's going to try and rend you. Even though he doesn't really know the scriptures anyway. But he's going to try and rend you. That's a, that's a wicked man. Right? But I want to stay on the topic of um, the judgment. Mercy and faith. And that's why once you got yourself right. Then yeah you're in a position. To what? To judge. Because you're right. Right? Not to say brother that you, you ain't going to slip. But you've dealt with whatever issue you had to deal with. So now we're going to go to one thing at a time, one thing at a time. Okay, one thing at a time. Okay, and you definitely can't judge if this is the case. Let's go to this. Bear with this a minute. Ecclesiastes 9, wrong one. Wrong one. Wisdom of Solomon 1. Bear me just a minute. Because I'm seeing a whole, a whole load of things going on. And so some of the things you just, you, you marvel at. Okay. Okay, so let's go to Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to jump to one. I'll go into this a lot as well. One. And. Three. For forward thoughts. Forward thoughts are perverse thoughts. Thoughts that are not of Yahweh Shai. And forward is what? A different doctrine as well. Okay. And how can you... That's another thing. How can you judge a man if you're teaching another doctrine? That's not even of the scriptures. You believe in Nawab, not or what's it? Nuwabianism, Afrocentricity, and all that rubbish. But you want to judge your brother? You, <laughs> you're in no position to judge because you you have a reprobate mind. You don't even believe in the scriptures. And it says, "Was separate from the Most High in His power when it is tried, tested, reproved with the unwise, for into a malicious soul." And we're going to go into that word, malicious. Okay. Let's see what pops up. Malicious. It says, "Harboring ill will, enmity, hostility," and you're able to see that a man that has the sermon is able to catch on to that. Okay. 
showing ill will, spiteful, and you got men that are spiteful, whether that's a man that's um, behind closed doors or hiding behind a camera, okay, trying to, um, you know, manipulate, spiteful, wicked, it says wicked, so these are wicked men, a man that's malicious, that don't put off that spirit, he's wicked, and two proven otherwise, from Latin maletoshosus, maletoshosus, wicked, malicious, ill will, intent to injure, black hearted, cruel, right, so you got men that just have a black, a black cloud over them, right, a malicious soul, mind, wisdom shall not enter, so men, when you start to see them, it's that like, where is he? How comes he's slowing down? It's because that malicious soul, soul is not allowing this man to what? To endure, to continue. So wisdom leaves, wisdom leaves when it sees maliciousness. Okay, because wisdom is what? It's pure. It's holy. Right? Nor do in a body that is subject to sin. For the Holy Spirit of discipline... Because the Holy Spirit, that's what it deals with. Your discipline will flee deceit. So the Holy Spirit, it doesn't, it doesn't deal with deceit. It doesn't deal with lies. See, there's purity within the Holy Spirit. It doesn't deal with deceit, lies, treachery, falsehood. And remove from faults that are without understanding. And that's why men, they have the Spirit stripped from them. The Lord doesn't need to take, the Lord doesn't need to take you out physically. He can take you out spiritually. Then... Physically, it will follow, okay, and remove from thoughts that are without understanding, right? Reprobate thoughts and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in. So, wisdom it can't dwell within your vessel when unrighteousness cometh in. You're not going to be able to teach the word properly the way it should be taught, okay? So, now we're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon. Bear me just a minute. Hope this is making sense. Okay, so now we're going to go to Bami just a minute. Here we go. Ecclesiasticus 3 and 24. Doing a lot of jumping around. Ecclesiastes 3 and 24. And it says, For many are deceived. Many are deceived. And yes, we know pride deceives as well. Okay. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion. And that's where you get heretics as well. Okay, because they have an opinion. And if anyone says to you, I want to know, this, this is my perception. It's my per the scripture says the scriptures are of no private interpretation. None. No secret interpretation. It's one faith, one doctrine, one breakdown. Right? For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. Right? So a vain opinion can deceive you. That's why you don't want to be well. That's that's my opinion. To hell with your opinion. Your Habashah doesn't care about your opinion. Right? It's about what the scriptures say. And an evil suspicion. It doesn't just say a suspicion. See, an opinion causes an evil suspicion because it's from a carnal place. You may look at a man and say, "Well, I don't, I don't, I just, I don't like the way. I don't, I don't like the way he is. I don't like the way he speaks." Well, that's 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 an opinion. That's your opinion. You can't let your opinion or your feelings or your emotions get in the way of truth. An evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment. And that's what happens because you're operating on what on a carnal wavelength. So through, an, through a vain opinion and the evil suspicion, right? So when you have a suspicion, you're going to brothers and say, "Well, I don't think this is right. Um, that that that's not right, you know." But can you you have to back it up with the scriptures? If not, then it's an evil suspicion has overthrown their judgment, and this is what happens to men. And when you go to 1 Timothy 6 and 4, it says, in the new translation, he is conceited and understands nothing. It said he has an unhealthy interest in, in controversies. So it's a particular spirit as well, you notice. 
you got some there in um, that spirit of contention, that spirit of controversy, right? You got some people they just watch because they, they like controversy, right? And semantics out of which cometh envy, abusive talk, also evil suspicions and disagreements and jealousy. So scripts are very, very um precise on on different spirits that that you will find within this truth. Okay. So now we're gonna to go to Wisdom of Solomon six and twenty three. Neither will I go with consuming envy. This speaking about wisdom. Neither will I go with uh, consuming envy. So wisdom is basically saying, I can't, I can't dwell with you. I can't roll with you. Because you're envious. Put off the envy, repent, put off the envy now. Wisdom can dwell. Wisdom can sup with you. For such a man will have no fellowship with wisdom. No fellowship is communion. So such a man is not gonna have a fellowship and communion and is gonna be a companion with wisdom. Okay? Because what? Wisdom cannot dwell with consuming and men are consumed with envy and they can't even see it. Right? And remember, we're still on the topic of what? Judgment, mercy, faith. Okay? Now let's go to Corinthians. Hope this is edifying. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 6 and 4. Okay. And even with these lessons I do, the first person I teach is myself. So when we're picking up these scriptures, it applies to ourselves first. Right? 1 Corinthians 6 and 4. Some heavy storms today. Baby, let's go to First Corinthians six and four. Six. Um. Right, this is heavy as well. Baby, just a minute. Baby, just a minute. See what we can find. Okay, and you know what? This is interesting because this is actually going into the the Passover. I want to start at six. This is First Corinthians five and six. Your glorifying is not good. Okay, that pride. No, you not that a little leaven. So pride is yes, it's leaven. Okay. Levering the whole lump. So you get a little bit, you ever cooked, you ever baked, you get a little bit, a tiny little bit of um what do you call it? Yeast that falls in. A tiny little bit of yeast, it rises. The whole cake. Just a little bit. Purge out there for the old leaven. And that's two things. Yes, it's pride, and it's also a false doctrine. So you got men. They're going to partake in a Passover. Okay. But they have different doctrines up in their mind. That's leaven. So you've got men that have high amounts of leaven within their camps. But Yahweh is going to deal with it. Right? Purge up there for the old leaven. That you may be a new lump. Right? So this is this truth is about purging out all the old leaven. The old man. The old ways. Maybe just a minute. It says purge out the old leaven, but you may be a new lump, right? As you are unleavened, as you are unleavened, right? Because what's the difference? What's the what's what's the difference? What's what's the difference between the Passover and the feast of unleavened bread? It's the same thing, right? You get rid of what the yeast, right? Any of these products in your household, what you get rid of it. But really, it's more so pertaining to what? You. That's the leaven. See, you see, you can't always get caught up on the physical. You get rid of what all that, all that, um, what's it? That leaven in your households. Anything with leaven in it. Okay. But really, the leaven is within what? 
the man. And that could be a, a false doctrine or pride. For even Mashiach, our Passover, because Yahweh ultimately is the Passover, is sacrifice for us. So the most important thing is what the belief in Yahweh Shai. And the worrying thing is you're going to have men that partake in the Passover that don't even believe. Okay? Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with old leaven. Okay? Neither with the leaven of... See, this is all linking up of malice. Right? So you don't want to be entering um, any Passover with malice in your heart for any brother. And wickedness. Okay? But with the unleavened bread of sincerity. Stay sincere. Let's look up what that word sincerity. See what comes up. Sincerity. Sincerity, honesty, genuineness. From the see what else we got? From Latin, sincerititum, sincerititum, genuine, very genuine. Um, good, yes, good, good, uh, with good faith. Okay. Plain spoken, unreserved sincerity. Okay, so you want to be keeping it with what? Sincerity. And when you go into the opposite of that word, it's insincerity. That's the opposite from Latin, inseris, inse, insincerous. Not genuine, not pure, spoiled and corrupted. And what makes one corrupt? The doctrine they teach. If you're teaching a false doctrine, that's corrupt. So if you have a if you have um any issues with the twelve tribes chart, that that rubbish about oh your mother has to be so called black and your father you're black, which is no thing as black nation as black. If you have that leaven, you better get rid of that before the Passover. If you still got the fundamentals of Christianity and you still hold forth in philosophies of Christianity, you better get rid of that before you enter the Passover. If you have an ought with a brother, you better get rid of that before the Passover. If you have any pride, you better get rid of that before the Passover. All these things. These are the things that are classed as what? Leaven. Okay? That ought to be what? Purged out. Okay? I write... I wrote unto you in an epistle, a letter, not to keep, not to company with fornicators, spiritual fornicators, idolaters. Okay, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world. Okay, bear me just a minute. Bear me just a minute. Um. Fornicator, someone who commits adultery or fornication, and that could be done by what spiritual fornication, which is idolatry, prostitution, lewdness. Okay, chamber vaulted from chambering. Okay, yes. Okay, from fornic fornicari, from Latin from fornix. And right here it says brothel, dealing with prostitution as well. Excuse me. Okay. And it says, and you could be do you could be doing that by what going into what different idols. Okay. Or with covetous, with the covetous. So the scriptures, you're not supposed to, lest the man repents. Obviously, you're not supposed to be keeping company with him or extortioners. Right. Go into that word extortioners. See what comes up. Demand or charge. Okay. Um, a criminal who extorts money from someone by threatening to expose or embarrassing information. A blackmailer. You got a lot of that demonic stuff going on in the truth. The Pharisees were known for doing that. The twisting out, exhorting, undue exercise of power. Yeah, these are wicked. That's a wicked trait. Okay, neither extortioners. Okay. Or idolatrous. For when must ye needs go out of the world? 
But now have I written unto you, not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be not a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer, right? And a railer, go into that word railer as well because they were railing on Yahweh Shai when he was upon that cross. Just a minute. Railer. To rail. Basically, a mocker. Yeah, some of that rails is um, a mocker, a scoffer, a mocker. That mocks against the truth, basically. A railer. A drunkard. Someone's getting pissed all the time. Or an extortioner. Of such one. No, not to eat. Right? For what I have to do to judge them, also that are without those that are in the world, without this truth, do you not judge them that are within? Right? And we're going to get to it. But them that are without the Most High... Judge if, therefore, put away from you amongst themselves that wicked person, <laughs> right? So he ain't supposed to be amongst your camp. If he's not, obviously, if he's not, he's not supposed to be amongst your camp at all. Okay. Do you not know that the saints are judge the world? So that's what the hopeful elect are being raised up to be judges. And if the world shall be judge of you, are he unworthy to judge the smallest matters? So can't you can't you even judge a, a small small matter, right? No, you not that we shall judge angels. How much more things that pertain to this life? So how much things are we gonna be judging pertaining according to this life? That's why we're going through things. If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. That's why you set a brother that's least esteemed in the church because he's humble and he's not partial. And he doesn't have no arm um, pulling power. Right? And not just him that's least esteemed amongst the church. He that has discernment and him that has the Holy Spirit upon him. And that answers, understands the scriptures. I speak to your shame. Because there was a lot of things going on with the Corinthians. It is so that there is not a wise man among you. Is it so that it's, there's not a wise man among you? No. Not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. Okay, so Paul was getting on him saying what... <laughs> Heaven is you got the scriptures, but you can't judge amongst yourselves. But brother, go after the law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. And you got men that would do that. They would go to Esau. He's what's it when they call it, judicial system or whatever they call it. They would go to Esau it's, instead of dealing with things in the right manner. Go to the law with thy brother, right before the unbelievers. So you got men with that messy ass spirit. Right now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you because you go to the law with one another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Nobody wants to be wrong, right? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud that your brethren, right? Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, neither idolaters, nor idolaters, nor effeminate, nor abused of themselves with mankind, sodomy, nor thieves, right? Still enough brothers in the truth, nor covetous, right? Wanting what another brother has, nor drunken drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the most high. And such were some of you, some brothers that came in truth, because you got brothers from different backgrounds. That's what you got to realize. But ye are washed. Okay. Through what the word, but ye are sanctified. Right? But ye are justified in the name of the Lord Yahweh Abishai. Once you stop doing those things and by the Spirit of the Most High. Okay. So once a man, you see, he's actually changed for the better. You don't you, you you leave that man alone. You you don't you don't bring up some old shit. Oh but he was doing this and what's he doing now? Has he repented? Huh? Let's go to Ecclesiastes 8 and 5. We're gonna shut off on this. Okay. Start at Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and 5. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. You see, 
Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. So if this man, you can clearly see, he's changed for the best. Yahweh tries to supper with him. Why, 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 are you, why are you still talking rubbish? If a man's repented, why are you still bringing up bull, bull crap? Right? And I'm not, I'm not going to do that. If I see a man's repented, I'm not going to say, well, you remember you done this two years ago. Has the man repented? Reproach not a man that turneth from sin. But remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Right? That's what you do. But men don't do that. So guess what Yahawashai does? He ends up what, stripping that spirit away from them. And has them in a carnal mind. Okay? The scriptures tell us how to deal. Judgment, mercy and faith. Very, very neglect, neglected matters within this truth. So with this lesson, I hope this was edifying. And until the next time, Shalom.